I also want to say, since we're working with this Prana Agni Mala model, uh, as we did on Tuesday, Prana is located in the area of the chest and it has to do with what we bring in. Agni is the digestive fire, the fire in the belly, uh, which is not just metaphorical. We actually do have a fire in the belly. That is where we process and that is where we um, act from. It's our will, it's our power. Uh, mala is the dirt that gets stored in the body. Uh, energetically, it's here. Physically, to some degree, it's here also, but energetically, it's here. Uh, so the practice that we did on Tuesday was about directing this flame of the digestive fire down towards the dirt, down towards the accumulated toxins of whatever sort, physical, mental, emotional. Direct that flame down, incinerate it, and then release. So on Tuesday, we were mainly thinking about the flame. I was really having you concentrate on that flame. And we will keep that awareness going. But today, I want to shift the emphasis just slightly to the release, because that's really what we want to do, is get rid of the toxins, get rid of the impurities, which exist, again, they're physical impurities. Um, there are waste products that the body needs to get rid of. And if we don't get rid of those, we have trouble. Shallow breathing, we don't completely um, get rid of the carbon dioxide. If you're constipated, you're not getting rid of solid waste. If you don't sweat, you're not getting rid of impurities. So on the physical level, it's important to get rid of the impurities. Also on the emotional and mental levels. If we hold negativity in the body, we're going to create stress, tension, dis-ease in the body, and dis-ease is the first step towards disease. So this is about proper digestion, yes, but also proper processing and releasing in all forms. So we're nurturing that digestive fire, um, but we're also nurturing the energetic fire. And I need to say one more thing because it got hot this week all of a sudden, and we want to watch out, as we're concentrating on this internal fire, for the qualities of pit, uh, pitta, which is heat in the body. And if you notice yourself getting frustrated or impatient, um, agitated, angry, those are pitta qualities. Pitta has wonderful qualities, too. Pitta is organized. If you want to get something done, you want a pitta. Um, but pitta can also be judgmental and controlling. So be aware of those qualities if they come up. The practice today, yes, we're going to keep nurturing this fire, but I want you to think of it as a releasing process so that we're not mentally getting hot. We're trying to mentally cool down while we soak this digestive fire. To that end, we'll be doing long exhales, releasing. We're going to do some gentle inversions, which I'm going to demonstrate for you. Um, and I want to say one more thing about that. Uh, well, it will come back to me. I want to show you the inversions before we get down on the floor. So on Tuesday, we did a supported desk pose or bridge pose. Um, and we got there from a pelvic lift, so let me just show you. This is an option. You can use this today. This is what we need the blanket for, just to let the hips settle on to the blanket. Um, and then you'll rest in this little bit of inversion, which points the flame towards the belly. We're going to also, I'm going to give you an option of a little bit more advanced version of this relaxed version, which will require not just the blanket, but also a wall. So I'm going to just quickly demonstrate so that when you're down on the floor, you'll know what's coming. You're going to come into a wall. A window is not ideal, but this is what's in the camera. Um, sit not too close to the wall, and then turn to face it, and you're going to put your feet up on the wall. Don't do this yet. Just watch. And then using your uh, feet, you're going to lever your hips up, Place the blanket under the pelvis, 
And then we're going to straighten the legs up. And this will be the supported inversion. It's a really gentle form of the shoulder stand. So I will talk you carefully through how to get in and out of this position when we get there, but just wanted you to have an idea of what's coming your way. All right, so have that blanket handy. And the other thing that I wanted to say is this. As we're moving through these poses, I want you to move really slowly. We're going to be doing repetitions, six repetitions. So imagine how you would walk through a labyrinth very deliberately, very slowly, or what it feels like if you're swimming the breaststroke. You move the body very fluidly and slowly. This is the feeling that we want to bring into the body today. Okay, so we'll begin standing at the back of the mat. Feel your feet against the floor. Let the three points of each foot root down into the floor equally. So the ball of the big toe, the ball of the little toe, the very center of the heel bone, dropping down towards the earth. Feel the steadiness in the feet and the lower legs. Draw the attention up to the thighs and hips. Feel the muscles of the belly, how they're helping you stand upright. Feel the length of the spine, imagine it reaching all the way up to the very top of the head. Stand tall, relax the shoulders, soften the chest. So we want the chest open, but not thrust forward. Chin will drop down slightly so that the back of the neck is lengthened. Keep the eyes open and gaze at one point. That point's going to be on a long, low angle. Let your lips close gently and start to breathe through your nose. And as you breathe in, picture the flame. And notice that your in-breath is going to blow the flame's direction down towards the low belly. And then as you exhale, imagine all of the waste products of the burning of that dirt coming up and out and leaving the body. So inhale, let the flame be directed downward. Let it burn up the mala in the low belly, the low energetic uh, area. And then exhale. Completely release with the breath out. Again, inhale, picture the flame, direct it down towards the lower belly. Imagine burning up toxins, impurities, you don't have to specify them. And then with the exhale, just release them up and out. Let them go out of the body. It's not that we don't want things to come into the body. We bring things in. We want to have experiences. We just don't want them to get stuck in here. So flow in and flow out. We have income and we have outgo. So keep that model in your mind. We're going to take six repetitions of Tadasana. Balancing on the balls of the feet six times. Remember the idea of walking slowly through a labyrinth or slowly swimming through nice, cool water. With the inhale, direct the flame down towards the belly as you lift the arms out and up and raise the heels away from the floor. Then with the exhale, lower the arms and the heels and empty out completely. Soften the shoulders. Come back to that balance under the feet. And we'll do it five more times. Inhale, raise the arms and the heels. Direct the flame down to the lower belly. And with the exhale, let your abdominal muscles help you to completely exhale and empty out. Make sure that the shoulders soften. Inhale, direct the flame downward. 
Picture it burning up impurities in the body, in the mind, in the emotional system. Exhale. Arms and heels come back down. Releasing completely. Empty out the breath all the way. Three more times. Inhale. Direct the plane downward with the breath. And exhale. Agree to release everything that's excess. Keep only what's needed. Two more times. Inhale, direct the plane downward. And exhale. Release the byproducts of that burning. Everything that you don't need to carry with you. One more time. And then relax in Samastiti. Let the control of the breath go. Feel the feet sinking down into the floor. Release tension from the body. So all you're left with is just enough to be steady here. We're going to work with groups of six, six repetitions, and in the case of the forward bend, we'll also add six breaths of stay. This is long. If you have a little extra pitta in your personality, you might get impatient and think, let's just move along here. What we're trying to do is slow down. So be with each repetition. Be with each breath. This is how we reprogram our nervous system and how we begin to slow the mind down. We'll take six repetitions of the forward bend. We're going to bring the arms down after each one. Cool, calm, and collected after each repetition. On the sixth repetition, we'll start the six breaths of stay. Remember to keep the chin down, please. Inhale as the arms raise forward and up. The flame is directed down towards the belly. And with your exhale, pull the belly to the spine. Bend over. Notice you're squeezing in the belly a little bit. This helps to uh, eliminate what needs to be released. Inhale, arms forward, chest open, let the flame be aiming towards the lower belly. And exhale, your arms are lowering down the front. You're releasing, exhaling completely to empty. That's the first of five. Inhale, slowly. Can you imagine the arms swimming through water as you raise them up? Exhale, bend yourself forward. Pulling the belly to the spine, making sure the exhale is complete. Then inhale, the arms reach forward as you open the chest and direct the flame down towards the low belly as you rise to the top. And exhale, relax your arms down to the sides. You're releasing completely with that exhale to all the way empty. Again, inhale. Arms are lifting, floating slowly. Flame is directed down to the low belly. And exhale, pull the belly in. Notice as you do this, the direction of the container is changing so that the flame goes a little bit more easily towards the lower belly. Inhale, float up. Direct the flame down to the low belly. Burn the impurities. And exhale, release them. Let the arms relax at the sides. Three more times like this. Stay nice and cool, calm in the head. Exhale, pull the belly in, bend forward, compressing the belly, helping to squeeze out the impurities and float up to the top, directing the flame down towards the belly as you lift up. Arms slowly down the front, even more slowly because you don't have that far to go. One more repetition just like that.
And on this final repetition, we're preparing to stay for six breaths, down in the forward bend. Now I will count, although your breath might be at a different length than mine, so see if you can keep track of six inhale, exhale cycles. Every inhale, you're trying to direct that flame towards the belly. When you're bent down, the flame is naturally going to move more easily towards the low belly. So take advantage of that slightly upside down position. So here we go, leading into six breaths of stay. Inhale, raise the arms as you direct the flame down to the low belly. Exhale, fold down, feel the belly come towards the spine, compressing around the belly. Hands wherever they're comfortable, they might be on the legs. I like to tuck my fingers under my toes, but if you have tight hamstrings, that won't work. Inhale, direct the flame towards the lower belly. And exhale, completely empty out. Inhale, direct the flame to the lower belly. Impurities, toxicities burning up. Exhale, completely release. Relax the upper body a little bit more. Make sure that the breath is completely out. You get all the way empty. And then inhale, direct the flame to the lower belly again. And exhale, completely empty out. Do three more breaths, you're at your own pace. Stay with the image. Remember to empty completely. Relax the neck and shoulders a little bit more. When you finish your three breaths on your own, we're going to lift on an inhale, directing the flame towards the lower belly as you come up to the top. And exhale the arms down the front, releasing completely, relaxing the shoulders. Exhale to empty. And then relax the breath. Focus the gaze. Root down through the feet. Breath moves at its own pace. Standing in Samasthiti with just enough effort so that you're steady. All the rest of you is ease. Keep your attention inside the body. Where do sensations draw your attention? See if you can relax a little bit more. A little more ease and space in the body. little more openness in the solar plexus, in the heart. Soften in the throat and jaw. Relax the grippiness of the mental state. We're going to move into a twisted triangle, taking a comfortably wide stance, feet parallel to each other. If you need to adjust that somehow, you can adjust as necessary, but if it's okay for your hips, feet stay parallel. And if you can't comfortably go that wide, just have your feet a little bit wider than hip um, distance apart. We're simply doing six repetitions, twisting each way, bringing the arms down after each repetition. I'm going to move the arms all the way out and up. 
If this is not comfortable for your shoulders, you can come just to here, and you, or you can even come up the front. So honor your body. <clears throat> the pose in any particular person will look different than in anybody else. Take a moment to settle through your feet. Notice where the prana area is, the area where we inhale, where we bring air in, but also this is the area energetically where we bring in sensations, where we bring in observations. Notice the area of the fire, where we process, digest, transform, and notice the area of the dirt, and also the area of elimination. All of these areas are going to be worked in this twist, so keep your awareness there. With the inhale, as you breathe the flame down towards the low belly, arms out and up. And as you exhale, we're twisting to the left side. Bring the right hand down to the leg or foot or floor, all the way twisted. Inhale, come all the way up to the top. Center yourself. And exhale. Twist over to the right leg in the same way. Feel the twist of the spine. Look up at your right hand. And inhale, come back up to the top. Exhale, relax the arms out and down to the sides. That's the first of six repetitions. Inhale, direct the flame to the lower belly. Raise the arms. And exhale, squeeze yourself around the center as you twist right hand to left leg or foot. Look up at your left fingertips, completely empty. Inhale, float to the top. We're directing the flame down towards the lower belly here. And then exhale, releasing as we twist down to the right side. Completely squeezed and emptied out. Inhale, up to the top. Direct the flame down. And exhale, lower the arms, releasing, finding relaxation in the shoulders, complete empty release. Third repetition. Inhale, direct the flame downward as you raise the arms. And exhale, squeeze yourself around your center like wringing out a dishcloth. Empty out completely. Then inhale, float to the top, direct the flame down towards the lower belly. And ring yourself out again as you twist down to the right leg. Turning and looking up at the right hand. Inhale, float to the top. Direct the flame down to the lower belly. And bring your arms down. Complete release. Empty the breath fully. Three more times. Inhale, direct the flame downward. And twist to the left. Squeeze yourself out, ring around the center, completely empty. Inhale, all the way to the top, direct the flame downward. And ring yourself out the other way as you twist to the right leg. Turning ahead and looking up, completely empty. And float to the top with the inhale. And empty completely with your exhale. Two more repetitions. If you're getting impatient, stay with the breath. So one breath at a time. Inhale, direct the flame down as the arms come out and up. And ring yourself out with the exhale. Empty completely. Feel that squeeze around your center. Inhale, come to the top. Direct the flame downward. And twist over to the right side. And flow to the top. Direct the flame downward. And release completely. The final round I'd like you to do on your own, please.
when you're ready, we'll return to Samasthiti, equal standing pose. Take a moment to connect down through your feet. And then lift the body tall without tension. Feel the steadiness of the legs. Draw that steadiness up. Feel the spaciousness of the head and the neck. And let that infuse the body as well. Perfect balance of stability and ease. Breath moving at its own pace. Keep the gaze fixed. Feel free to please blink your eyes, but just one point of focus. And observe inside the body. Notice where your attention is drawn. What do you feel in this area of prana, agni, and mala? You'll notice this process is never over. As long as we're alive in this body, we're going to be taking something in, and then we're going to be doing something with it, and then we'll be releasing or holding on. So this is why we need constant ongoing practice. You do a great practice today. You'll feel wonderful today. And maybe you'll eat all the right foods, do everything right today, and then you have to do it again tomorrow. So we need to keep this flow of this ability to bring things in, but also the ability to slough things off. We're going to take the half squat. This is another great posture for compressing in the belly. And I'd like you to please, if it doesn't create strain in your breath, just pause with your breath out for a moment so you really feel that your abdominals are pulled in and you're all the way emptied. So six repetitions of the half squat, Ardha Utkatasana. We'll take the arms down after each repetition. Again, pacify that impatient pitta. Keep with the breath, do the movement we're doing, be right here. As you inhale, raise the arms forward and up, direct the flame down towards the low belly. With your exhale, bend your knees and fold down. Hands to the knees or to the floor, completely empty, pause just a moment. And then with your inhale, direct that plane down to the lower belly as you raise the arms, lift the chest, straighten the legs. And then exhale, bring the arms down, completely releasing, complete breath, complete exhale, completely relax the shoulders. Five more times. Inhale, direct the flame downward as you raise the arms. And exhale, bend down. Think about emptying out completely, getting rid of all that old stagnant energy that you don't need to hold. And inhale, lift and direct that flame downward. Burn up even more stored impurities and release with the arms coming down the front. Soften the shoulders. Inhale, direct the flame downward, raise the arms. Exhale, fold down, empty completely. Pause if it's comfortable. And as you inhale and come up, direct the flame down again. We're burning up the impurities with each breath. Exhale, arms down, release completely. Try the next three on your own.
done, relax the breath. Heart is beating now, breath is moving, let it go. Gaze steady. So cool, calm, and collected, even though the heart's beating, the blood is pumping, you may have gotten a little hot there. Keep the gaze steady. Keep your demeanor relaxed. Root down through the feet. Be where you are. Just enough stability in the body to be steady. No excess tension. Keep noticing and releasing. Anything extra that doesn't need to be held on to, let it go. It's an ongoing process. We're getting ready to go into some downward facing dog. So I really want you to picture the dynamics of the flame. When you turn yourself upside down, the flame is naturally going to move towards the pelvis. I want to do six repetitions, warming up for the downward dog and then actually stay for six breaths. Of course, if any of that is too much, you'll um, just stop when you've had enough. You can rest in child's pose or go onto your back if you are not up for doing all six of the breaths in the pose. That's fine. So please come down onto all fours. As we prepare here, we're going to move from child's pose to downward facing dog six times. On the sixth one, we begin our stay of six breaths. Inhale, direct the flame to the lower belly. And exhale, bring your hips back to your heels. Let your arms bend and your head hang down. Feel that compression in the belly. Complete exhale. Then inhale, rise up to all fours. Direct the flame to the belly. And exhale, downward dog. Keep your knees a little bit bent for this first one and really get your hips as high as they can be. Then inhale the knees down to the floor. Direct the flame to the low belly. And exhale to the child's pose. So squeeze out around the middle, completely empty. And inhale, rise up to all fours. Direct the flame to the low belly. And then turn yourself upside down, raise the hips, drop the head, squeeze the belly towards the spine. And inhale, knees come to the floor, breathe the flame to the low belly. And exhale, feel the belly compress as you move hips back to heels. Again, inhale, breathe the flame to the uh, belly as you come to all fours. And exhale to the downward dog. Pull the belly into the spine. Keep those hips high. Inhale, knees to the floor. Breathe the flame to the low belly. And exhale, round the hips back to the heels. Soften the upper body. Remember, we want release in this emptiness. Inhale, breathe the flame to the belly. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, breathe the flame to the belly. Exhale, child's pose, empty out completely. Doing one more just like that. Inhale, breathe the flame towards the lower belly. Exhale, pull the belly into the spine. You're turning yourself upside down. And inhale, knees to the floor. Breathe the flame to the belly. Exhale to child's pose. Take a little break if you need to. The next one, we're going to stay up for six breaths. Inhale, breathe the flame towards the belly. Do what works for you. Exhale to the downward facing dog. And then we start six counts. Inhale, feel 
the flame breathe towards the belly. It's a little easier in this upside down position. Exhale, pull the belly in, empty completely. If you're comfortable pausing and you want to pause a little, feel free to do that. Five more breaths here at your own pace. We'll explore the dynamics of the flame and the mala exiting. With the inhale, really direct the flame towards the lower belly. And with the exhale, squeeze the belly in towards the spine. If it's comfortable and you want to pause a little suction of the belly to the spine, feel free to do that. Your own slow, complete breath, please. When you've had the six repetitions, and we've had the six breaths in the posture, you'll use an inhale to bring your knees to the floor, and exhale to empty out completely as you bring your hips back towards your heels, and then rest in the child's pose. Find where you're comfortable. We want this compression of the belly, so if you can find a comfortable child's pose, let yourself sink into that position. Breath moving naturally. Now we're going to move over onto the back. We're doing uh, six repetitions of Dvipada Pitam, the desk pose. Now we're going to move into the inversion. Um, so you may want to change your orientation now or have your blanket handy now. I'm going to move after I do the Dvipada Pitam. We'll come down onto the back, knees bent, feet on the floor. And allow the back of the body to sink down into the floor. Take a couple relaxed breaths, feeling that contact between the feet and the floor. The pelvis and the floor. The back ribs and shoulder blades. The arms and hands. The back of the head. And then bring your attention to the flame. Flame is around the solar plexus or belly button area. As we raise the hips, it's going to tilt the flame towards the pelvis. We're going to be doing that on an inhale, so the movement and the breath are both going to help direct the flame towards the mala. Six repetitions. With the inhale, raise the arms up and back and lift the hips towards the ceiling. Flame is going to move towards the pelvis. And then with the exhale, arms and hips come back down. Be sure you squeeze your belly in. Remember, we're trying to wring all of that held tension, impurities, toxicity out. Five more times. Inhale, raise the arms and the hips. Direct the flame towards the low belly. And then exhale, arms and hips come back down. Empty out completely. Move through the lower back one vertebra at a time. That'll help you squeeze the belly in and make sure that exhale is uh, completely achieved. Inhale, raise the hips. Lift the arms up and back. Direct the flame towards the lower belly. And exhale, arms and hips come back down. Empty out completely. We'll do that three more times. 
Keep directing this lane on every inhale. So on the final repetition, if you're going to do your inversion here, you can slide the blanket underneath your hips. Inhale, lift the hips and the arms. If you're staying here, you can dry, bring the blanket, put it under the pelvis, and then just start to settle. Everyone else, we're going to shift over to a position by the wall. If your hips are down on the blanket, in the desk pose, slow breath, keep directing the flame towards the belly. If you're going to use the wall, lie down, not too close to the wall. This is not about stretching the hamstrings up so much right now, just having the legs comfortably supported. Then you're going to bend your knees. As you exhale, lift your hips up and then take your blanket and slide it underneath the pelvis. Once you're there, legs come straight. Whichever inversion you're doing, arms comfortably out at the sides with the palms up. And then stay with the image and do 12 breaths. Inhaling, directing the flame towards the belly. And exhaling completely. Release into the floor. Breath is completely out. Inhale, direct the flame to the belly. And empty completely with the exhale. Have the legs as relaxed as they can be in this position. Sink the back of the pelvis down. Inhale, direct the flame to the belly. And relax, complete exhale. Inhale, direct the flame to the belly. Pull the belly in with the exhale, release. Complete breath out. And inhale, direct the flame. And release completely with the exhale. Inhale, direct the flame, burning up the energetic waste products, releasing them with exhale. That was six of my breaths. Now do six on your own. Stay with the bhavana. Be sure that the sensation of the body is one of release and surrender downward. All tension trying to drop into the floor. Close the eyes, soften the face, keep directing the flame, keep burning up the dirt, and then getting rid of it. Stay with the image. Direct the flame to the lower belly on the inhale. Release it completely with the exhale. When you finish the 12 breaths, I'd like you to stay just a little longer here, but simply relax the breath. Release the body down into the floor. Relax as much tension as possible and observe.
When you feel ready, I'd like you to please bend the legs again. Use an exhale to gently lift the hips, slide the blanket out from underneath you, and then just pause there. Keep your feet on the wall. Let the sacrum settle down into the floor. And please draw the knees into the chest. Give them a gentle hug. I'm going to roll the knees to the right side and use your left hand to help prop yourself up. Move on to the mat again and lie down comfortably on your back. If it feels fine to have both legs extended out, choose that position. Otherwise, you can bend the knees with the feet either on the floor or into the chest. Close your eyes. Have the arms comfortably away from the body with the palms turned up. Relax the breath. Notice the flame still burning. You don't need to cause it to be. You can nourish it, but it's there no matter what. And notice the sense of the body dropping into the floor. Releasing even more built up tension. into complete ease. Finding yourself softer, more open. Interestingly, more receptive. The more you get rid of, the more you can receive. Slowly bring the legs together, the arms a little closer to the torso, and then bend the knees so that the feet rest on the floor. Feel that contact between the bottoms of the feet and the floor. Find release in this position. Then we bring the knees into the chest. You can continue to rest the arms down or one hand on each knee. Separate the feet, relax the feet. And again, complete release in this position. Now we're going to go into a twist, staying for six breaths on each side. Again, if you tend towards being impatient, one breath at a time. Count breath number one, feel it, breathe it, release it. Count breath number two, do the same thing. Each breath, full attention. <clears throat> Every inhale, we're continuing to direct the flame towards the low belly. 
Every exhale, we're continu continuing to release and we're squeezing ourselves out. So really give yourself this opportunity to let go of all of that stored up, whether it's physical, mental, emotional energy. We're letting it go now. Take an inhale and allow the arms to come comfortably away from the torso. And then with the exhale, both knees will drop to the left side. You can do any version of the twist you prefer. Left hand could go on the right knee if you like. And you're on your own to count six breath cycles. Inhaling, directing the flame down towards the belly. Burning up the dirt. And exhale, releasing it. Complete exhale. Soften the right shoulder. Let it all out. Pause if that's comfortable. Do five more breaths. When you finish those six breaths, don't rush. But when you finish, we'll inhale the knees back to the center. Again, the hands can be on the knees or relax on the floor. Pause right there with the legs folded into the chest. Relax the feet. Full, complete breath. And then as you're ready, you can exhale and bring both knees over to the right side. Again, choose whatever version of the twist your body prefers. Do six breaths. Follow the flow of the breath. Direct the flame down on the inhale. Complete exhale. Empty out. Relax that left shoulder. That was breath number one. Breath number two. Count them and do uh, five more breaths on your own so you do six completely. When you get done with your six breaths, come back into the center on an inhale. And pause for a moment there. Relax the breath. Bring one hand to each knee. Relax the feet. As you inhale, direct the flame down to the belly. And as you exhale, pull your thighs in close as you squeeze all of the air out, releasing all of the impurities. Pause. Then inhale, direct the flame towards the lower belly. Move the knees a little bit away from the chest. And then exhale. Hug the knees in close as you compress the belly. Imagine all the impurities, all the excess leaving. Whatever needs to be eliminated, it goes. Inhale, 
Direct the flame down to the lower belly. And exhale, hug the knees and release. Be sure you get empty. The belly is squeezed and the shoulders soften. Three more breaths. When you're done, bring the feet down to the floor. Keep the knees bent for a moment. Relax the arms with the palms towards the ceiling at your sides. Feel the floor beneath you. Let the body take the support of the floor and release all excess tension down into the floor. As you're ready, we'll move out into the final relaxation, extending each leg. If you'd like to have something behind your head, now you can. Feet separated as wide as your mat. Arms separated wider than the mat with the palms up. Feeling the body settle into this position. Allowing tension to drop down into the floor. Eyes are closed. Breath is relaxed. With every breath, a little bit more release. Constant, continual release of excess tension. Trust that whatever needs to be eliminated will go. You don't need to specify just allow it to leave. If the attention wanders, you can draw it back to the flame. Once the attention is refocused on the flame, you can continue releasing and being aware of that release. Ease filling the body.
notice where your attention is. If it has wandered, bring it back. Notice the flame. Don't stop to judge or self-criticize. Just bring it back to the focus of the flame. Notice that constant flame. And once the mind is still again, go back to the release. Taking advantage of this moment to let go of what needs to be eliminated. In this moment, to release what you don't need to carry around anymore. This moment to let go of tension. Keep noticing the opportunities, each breath an opportunity to release and find more ease. Feel your body, notice it resting on the floor. Notice the stability of the floor and its ability to absorb endless amounts of tension as you release it out of your body. Begin to prepare to move. Feel your feet, feel your hands. Very slowly start to move the fingers and the toes. Gradually move your way into a stretch with the arms reaching overhead, the fingers and the toes stretching away from each other. And as you're ready, you can draw the knees into the chest. And then roll over to the right side. Take a moment, curl in that little fetal position. And then with your left hand, gently prop yourself up. And come to a comfortable seated position. You can use the blanket or feel free to use a chair. 
If you have a meditation cushion, of course, sit up on that. If your back or your legs are not comfortable when you're on the floor, please sit on a chair. Sit on a flat chair up towards the edge. Don't lean against the back. Have your feet flat down on the floor. Just going to do a little breath awareness. Close the eyes and bring yourself back to this model of Prana Agni Mala. Prana area is the chest. Agni is the belly. The Mala resides in the Apana area, low belly, pelvis. Slow breath. Inhale. Direct the flame downwards towards the lower belly. Burning up the mala. And exhale. Completely release. Let all of the results of that burning out. And then inhale as you're ready. Again, direct the flame down to the low belly. Burn up the dirt and then exhale. Be sure the exhale is complete. And take a few more breaths like this. Relax the breath, but keep the attention in the body. Notice that flame. Feel your sit bones. Feel the rootedness to your seat. And allow tension to leave the body once again. Please bring your hands into the Anjali Mudra prayer position in front of the chest. May you be in peace. May your heart remain open. May you awaken to the light of your own true nature. May you be healed. May you be a source of healing for all beings. Namaste.
Thanks everybody for being here. Uh, we are going to do an extended pranayama for the next 15 or so minutes. Um, you are all welcome to stay, even if you're not signed up for the cleanse. Um, please, before you sign off though, let me know that you are here. Just give me a comment that you are here. So I'm going to move through the three pieces of breath work for the cleanse. Um, you may want a tissue handy. I'm going to walk you through the alternate nostril breathing first, Nadi Shodana. I'm just going to do six rounds here. If you are doing the cleanse and you look at the YouTube, there's one that says long form. There are 12 rounds there. So if you want to, going forward, do a longer practice of the alternate nostril, that's guided for you on the YouTube link. So we start the Nadi Shodana with the right hand as our valving hand, folding the index and middle fingers down. It feels a bit awkward, but you're gonna to be touching your nose, so it will feel less awkward in a moment. So the index and middle finger are bent down. We're gonna use the thumb on the right nostril, the ring finger on the left nostril. Now turn your hand to face you, to, uh, towards the face. Bring your thumb onto your right nostril, and then place your ring finger up on the cartilage of the left. The nostril that we breathe through, we actually block just a little bit, and that's just to close down the passageway so it takes longer for the thread of air to come through. We want the longest, thinnest, smoothest thread of breath that we can find. So I'm gonna talk you through three rounds and then let you do three on your own. So we have the right nostril completely blocked, the left nostril partially blocked. And this is where we begin. Inhale through that partially blocked left nostril. Then you'll switch and exhale out through the right, partially blocking the right nostril with the thumb on the cartilage. Then stay there and inhale through the partially blocked right nostril. And then switch and exhale out through the partially blocked left nostril. That's one round. Inhale through the left. Switch and exhale right. Stay, inhale right. And switch and exhale left. That's two rounds. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. And exhale left. That's three rounds. Try three more on your own. So begin the round on the left and end it on the left. When you finish that third round, you should be exhaling out the left to finish. And you can simply rest your right hand down where it's comfortable. Relax the breath. Keep the attention inside the body. If you feel any tension, release. 
Soften the neck and shoulders, soften the face. Notice the effects. Nadi refers to the energy channels. Shodhana means to purify. We're purifying the subtle energy channels of the body. Cross hemisphere integration because we're breathing into the uh, two of the main energy channels that cross each other. Notice what you feel. We're going to move on to Kapalabhati. This is a Kriya, a cleansing technique. I'm going to show you what's in the long form here, which is going to be 60, 60 quick pumpings with a retention. Um, if this is too much for you, go back to the simpler version. You can see it in the tutorial or in the short form. And I want to remind you, contraindicated if you're pregnant, if you have heart disease, or untreated um, high blood pressure. If you are in any of those situations, you can go to that breath awareness where you're breathing the flame down and then exhaling the excess. So we're going to do three rounds here. I'm going to do 60 quick pumpings. It's a forceful exhale. You can place your hand on your belly and feel how the abdominal wall pulls back. The inhale is passive. You don't have to pant it in. We're not doing bellows. We're just breathing out and letting the air come in quickly. After the 60 pumpings, you're going to leave your breath out and bend down for 10 seconds. And then you're going to inhale, lift up. And if you want, engage, engage the bandhas, engage the pelvic floor, the root lock, the chin lock, the jalandhara bandha, so we contain the energy in the body, and we'll stay for 10 breaths or 10 seconds with the breath held in. If that creates discomfort, do it less or just skip that part. You can just take relaxed breaths in between the rounds if you prefer. Now place your head on your low belly so you can feel this. Forceful exhale, passive inhale, 60 pumpings. If you want to do 20 slow ones or 40 slow ones, please do that. And begin by exhaling completely. When you exhale, you should feel the belly pulling in towards the spine. Then we inhale to prepare. completely and bend down, hold the breath out. Inhale, lift up. Full inhale, engage the root lock and the chin lock and hold for 10 seconds. Relax the breath, relax the bandhas. Take a couple relaxed breaths. This is the called the shining skull breath. So we're working with the central channel and bringing energy right up to the very top of the head. It's also called the breath of fire. You might feel that. Okay, we're doing another round of 60. Inhale to prepare. Exhale completely and hold the breath out. Now 
Inhale, lift. And hold the breath in with the root lock and the chin lock engaged. Lifting the pelvic floor, dropping the chin down. Relax and inhale, release the bandhas. Take a couple relaxed breaths. Observation in the body. One more time, inhale to prepare. Completely and forward, hold the breath in. Inhale, lift up. Full breath in. Engage the pelvic floor, drop the chin, and hold. And relax the breath. Feel the effects. Really stimulating for the digestive fire. Notice if you feel anything in the head. Soften and release tension. We're going to finish with five B buzzing breaths. There are three possible variations of the mudra. These are all on the uh, tutorials and the short and long form. The simplest is to cover the ears, the tragus, that little cartilage with the thumbs, and set your forefingers across your brow. In the next variation, in each one the thumbs are covering the tragus, um, you can bring your fingertips up and cup them over the top of the skull. The fingers are separated there. And then the actual mudra, Shanmukha Mudra, which I'm going to demonstrate, has the ears covered with the thumbs, the index fingers gently, very gently, no pressure on the eyeballs, but gently on the inner eye, middle fingers on the nose, ring fingers above the lips, pinky fingers below the lips. So choose any of those um, hand variations you prefer. You're going to hum very loudly, vibrate your skull. This is a brain massage. Any pitch that you like, you don't have to choose the same pitch as I do or the same pitch each time with yourself. So five nice loud hums. The ears are going to be closed and then you're just going to hum and vibrate. Inhale to prepare. Mm.
lower your hands. Keep the eyes closed for a minute and observe. Notice what you feel in the body. Feel the effects of all of that breath work. That brings us to the end of the session. I uh, hope that you will keep doing the pranayama and the kriya daily. Best is in the morning before breakfast. Um, if you do it after breakfast, wait a couple hours. We feel that Kapalabhati does not want to be done on a full belly. Um, these are stimulating, so don't do them later in the day. I think you could probably feel that, right? Uh, if you have any questions, if you need support around any of the breathing, please send an email. Love to help you. Um, but see if you can keep doing these every day for the rest of the cleanse if you're doing the cleanse. And check out the different YouTube links. There are different possible lengths of repetitions. So you can do the short form or the long form, whichever suits you better. All right, so that brings us to the end of today's session. Um, there will be another um, evening session tomorrow night, Friday night, and um, that will start at 8 o'clock. And we'll be in touch by email between now and then. So I hope it's a great day, and please reach out, tell us how you're doing, you can either send an email or feel free to post something if you like, if you think the whole group would like to see it, um, you can post something on the group. Alright, so let me know if you were here, and have a wonderful day, be well, and we'll see you soon.